We're constantly bombarded with trailers, posters, and concept art for franchise films, but there are a few big sequels coming out that have stayed under the radar. From indie comedies to biblical epics, let's take a look at some of the sequels you didn't know were being made. The Pirates of the Caribbean films have continued to rake in money at the box office, but after five movies, their appeal among audiences and critics has been waning. The latest installment, 2017's Dead Men Tell No Tales, sits at an abysmal 30% on Rotten Tomatoes. It raises the question of whether more pirate sequels are warranted, but it looks like Disney has decided to test the waters by dusting off the franchise for at least one more outing. Ted Elliott, co-writer of the first four Pirates movies, has been tapped to come up with a new adventure alongside Chernobyl scribe Craig Mazin. Although this new Pirates film has been referred to as a reboot, the writers and studio reportedly haven't yet settled on a direction for the sixth film. Among the questions still up in the air, whether or not it will include Johnny Depp's swaggering, hard-drinking character Captain Jack Sparrow. Well, today is your lucky day, because I just happen to be Captain Jack Sparrow. Despite Captain Jack's popularity, Johnny Depp's Hollywood appeal has been on the decline in recent years, bringing uncertainty as to whether the studio will want to risk hanging a fresh new pirate's tail on his shoulders, or whether they'll opt to move on to a new star. We'll have to wait to see whether The Sixth Pirates of the Caribbean is a sequel, reboot, or something in between. Until then, drink up, me hearties, yo-ho! Although producer Phil Lord has said that the team behind the Jump Street movies is putting a pin in 23 Jump Street, which would mark the third outing for 21 and 22 Jump Street stars Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill, the studio's moving forward with a spin-off of the comedy franchise, this time focusing on a female duo. The first two Jump Street films followed a pair of male cops who went undercover at educational institutions in order to ferret out elusive drug suppliers. Presumably, the plot of 24 Jump Street would be much in the same vein, and would exist in the same universe as the existing Jump Street films, functioning as a continuation of the story started by officers Morton Schmidt and Greg Jenko in the first movie. This time, the stars at the center of the Jump Street tale will reportedly be Tiffany Haddish and Zendaya, whom we assume will both be playing undercover narcotics officers similar to Tatum and Hill's characters in the first two movies. After directing the first two Jump Street films, Chris Miller and Phil Lord will be stepping aside for this third outing, and Rodney Rothman is coming aboard to helm the spin-off, collaborating on the script with Bob's Burgers writers Lizzie and Wendy Molyneux. Rothman previously helped write the screenplay for 22 Jump Street and co-directed Lord and Miller's acclaimed animated film Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. No word yet on what the plot will entail or whether Schmidt or Jenko will make an appearance. Start your engines, because it sounds like a sequel to 2017's motortastic heist hit Baby Driver may eventually be zooming its way into production. According to Ansel Elgort, the star of the first film, not only is writer-director Edgar Wright eager to make a sequel, but he has in fact already penned the script, and Elgort has read it. Yes, I think it's going to happen. I think there'll be Baby Driver 2. Okay. It has a different title, actually. <laughs> As for what the plot of a Baby Driver sequel would look like, Reich told Empire in 2017, With most sequels, you have to contrive something so they go back to square one, unless there's somewhere deeper for them to go. I think with Baby Driver, there's more that you can do in that realm, and I sort of have an idea that if you did another one, you would subvert his involvement in the crime in a different way, so he's not kind of the apprentice anymore. Due to Elgort's and Wright's existing commitments, it could still be a while before Baby Driver 2 moves into production, but it sounds like once things do move ahead with the high-speed sequel, it'll be worth checking out. Coming off the runaway success of 2018's Crazy Rich Asians, it would have been surprising if the opulent film didn't earn a sequel. In fact, it's getting two. Based on Kevin Kwan's books of the same names, China Rich Girlfriend and Rich People Problems are both moving ahead at Warner Brothers, although it may be a while before we get to see them. Due to the busy schedules of the franchise's A-list cast and director John M. Chu, who is currently working on adapting Lin-Manuel Miranda's musical In the Heights for the big screen, there may be a wait before everyone can get together again for the next two installments in the Crazy Rich Asian saga. However, producer Nina Jacobson says that the plan is to shoot both sequels back-to-back -back so that fans aren't waiting years between the second and third films. Jacobson promises, We'll make it up to them on the back end by shooting two films together. As for when this back-to-back -back shooting might happen, it could still be a ways off. According to actress Gemma Chan, who portrayed polished socialite Astrid Leong, filming on China Rich Girlfriend and Rich People Problems will begin sometime in, quote, 2020 at the earliest, making the soonest we can expect China Rich Girlfriend late 2021, or possibly even later. While Quentin Tarantino continues to circle his own eventual R-rated Star Trek spinoff, Noah Hawley will be reportedly continuing the story that began with J.J. Abrams' 2009 outing, centered around Captain James T. Kirk and the crew of the Enterprise NCC-1701. 
Howley, who is best known for the acclaimed TV series Fargo and Legion, has been tapped to write and direct a fourth film in the rebooted Star Trek franchise, continuing the adventures of Kirk, Spock, Uhura, Scotty, Sulu, and Bones. Do you have any idea how ridiculous it is to hide a starship on the bottom of the ocean? We've been doing here since last night. Sadly, missing from the cast lineup for the fourth Star Trek film is Anton Yelchin, who played ship's navigator Pavel Chekhov in the first three rebooted Star Trek films. After completing his work on Star Trek Beyond, Yelchin was tragically killed in a 2016 freak accident in his own driveway at only 27 years old. Since Beyond was already close to release at the time of his death, Yelchin's storyline didn't lay any groundwork for him to exit the franchise, and the film was released largely unaltered, save for a card at the end that read simply, For Anton. Producer J.J. Abrams has said that the role of Chekhov will not be recast for future Star Trek films, which means that if and when Howley's Star Trek moves into production, it will have to reckon with the absence of a character who ended the third film with every intent of returning. We appear to be in the midst of an Eddie Murphy renaissance. After gradually fading from the spotlight since his heyday in the 80s and early 90s, Murphy is suddenly back in a big way, giving a critically acclaimed performance in 2019's Dolomite Is My Name, making a triumphant return to Saturday Night Live as a host, lining up new stand-up comedy specials for Netflix, and announcing sequels to two of his biggest hits from the 80s, Coming to America and Beverly Hills Cop. Marking the fourth installment in the Beverly Hills Cop franchise, the newest sequel will also be a collaboration between Murphy and Netflix, after Paramount previously pulled the plug on a planned Beverly Hills Cop 4 back in 2016. Murphy will be reprising his role as Axel Foley, the Detroit cop who repeatedly finds himself traveling to Beverly Hills to investigate various crimes. The first Beverly Hills Cop was a smash success at the box office in 1984, rising to become one of the highest-grossing comedies of all time although the sequels in 1987 and 1994 brought in diminishing returns. There's no word yet on when Beverly Hills Cop 4 will move into production at Netflix, but considering how fast Murphy's star is once again rising, we wouldn't be surprised if the streaming giant decides to strike while the iron is hot. After six successful installments in the found footage horror franchise, Paranormal Activity is coming back with a seventh film, which will once again partner Paramount Studios with horror mega-producer Jason Blum. Although Paranormal Activity 7 has yet to settle on a director, cast, or title, the studio has managed to peg down a release date, March 19, 2021. The studio is also keeping the story details under wraps, but with six existing films already in the franchise, we can take some educated guesses about what a seventh Paranormal Activity might look like. After the first film focused on newlyweds Katie and Mika, every subsequent installment has tied back to Katie and her family in one way or another. Some provide information on Katie and her sister Christie's childhood encounters with a demon, while others detail what happened to Katie following the events of the first movie. However, the Paranormal Activity sequels most frequently focus on new characters that happen to encounter Katie and her demonic companion Toby, enabling the franchise to tell wider and more intricately entwined stories. Hi, Toby. We expect Paranormal Activity 7 to continue this trend in some way, introducing a new group of characters doomed to have their lives ruined by crossing paths with Katie or her family. Keeping with the style of the first six films, we also anticipate the seventh Paranormal Activity to be presented as found footage recorded via security cameras, mobile devices, and other household recording equipment. Nearly a quarter century after the first Scream slashed its way into theaters, a fifth installment in the deliciously self-aware horror franchise is in the early stages of development at Spyglass Media Group. The original Scream, released in 1996, was the brainchild of horror visionary Wes Craven, who passed away in 2015, and Dawson's Creek scribe Kevin Williamson. The screenplay is a near-perfect blend of meta-humor and genuine scares, with its cast of horror movie aficionados frequently contrasting how characters in a horror movie would act versus how they should act. There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie. The film has since spawned three sequels, with the most recent, Scream 4, releasing in 2011. Although Spyglass hasn't announced any details about the fifth Scream film other than it's happening, chances seem high that the cast would include original stars Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, and David Arquette, who have appeared in all four previous Scream installments. Up until now, every Scream movie is centered around Campbell's character Sidney Prescott, who has the terrible luck of being repeatedly targeted by a rotating carousel of killers donning ghost face masks. While it's possible Scream 5 could move away from Sydney and focus on someone new, we'd hope that Campbell would be involved in at least some capacity, along with some of the other familiar faces from the previous Scream movies. Fans of the gibberish-speaking, banana-loving henchmen of the Despicable Me movies rejoice! A sequel to 2015's spin-off film Minions, centered on the adventures of the Tiny Terrors, is set to arrive in theaters on July 3, 2020. 
This one will be called Minions The Rise of Gru, suggesting that we may be getting an origin story for the Steve Carell voiced protagonist of the Despicable Me movies from the perspective of his most loyal accomplices. Minions, of course, provided audiences with the backstory for the Minions themselves and first introduced them to Gru as a child, so it would make sense for the sequel to pick up where that film left off, tracing Gru's path to supervillainy. Returning for The Rise of Gru is director Kyle Balda, who previously co-directed both Minions and Despicable Me 3. However, Pierre Coffin, who co-directed every previous Despicable Me film on top of voicing all the Minions, will be stepping away from the co-directorial chair for Rise of Gru and will be replaced by Brad Abelson. Never fear, though, Coffin will still be providing the distinctive voices for the film's beloved yellow characters. Whoa, oh la la. Steve Carell will also likely be returning, giving the Gru-centric title, but less clear is whether Sandra Bullock and John Hamm will be reprising their villainous roles from Minions. We hope so. Even if they're not the main focus, it would be fun to check in with the Overkills and see what dastardly things they're up to. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies and TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.